Hi there folks, and it's another video from the Mailrite platform. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing Google My Business and how you set up a Google My Business page. It's me, Jonathan Denwood, and I've got my co-founder, Adam Brown, and we're gonna go through the basics of what Google My Business is. If you and why it's important for you to set this up if you are a real estate agent. And then also, we need you to go and subscribe and uh, click the bell to get notifications for us, right? Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really encourages us to keep making these videos. Yeah, thanks. And Adam, what are some of the basic things that real estate agents got to understand about Google My Business and why you feel and why I feel it's so important in 2022 that agent set up a page on Google? Yeah, such good questions. Um, first off, everybody knows Google's the largest search engine in the world. So that is the main reason if not the only reason we really need to set up a Google My Business listing account. So um, one thing I would probably start off with is asking if people have ever Googled themselves, you know, Google your name, see what pops up, what kind of photos pop up, does your business pop up or anything about your business pop up or is it just kind of personal photos, maybe some photos from like the 70s from way back when before like internet was even around, I don't know. And, um, you know, this also gives you a good idea of what other people are seeing when they Google you, if they're looking to do business with you in real estate or whatever business for that matter. So, um, you know, this is basically an online listing of your business, what you do, the services and information about you and your business. So it's, it's super important that it's not just set up, but it's set up correctly. And there's some different nuances with it and details that need to be included that we're going to share with you about today. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Adam. There's two crucial areas why this is so important, folks. Number one is mobile. Um, it's linked when you somebody does a search and they're using a mobile phone and they're looking, they do a search and I live in Northern Nevada in Carson City. So as an example, if I did a search, Carson City real estate agent on my phone, um, there's a good possibility, doesn't happen every time, but there's more than likely that what is called the Google local map will appear, mm, pack. Yeah. The Google map pack will appear. And that is a Google map which highlights three to five local agents or brokerages that are the nearest to my phone. And guess what else shows up? It will be those three to five agents, my Google pay, my business pages that will show up as well. Yeah. Um, and that's... And it's got even more crucial if you're actually spending some money with Google, which we're going to talk about a bit later in probably a series of free videos. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics. Then in the second video, we're probably going to show you how we set up a Google business page for our agent that is using MailRite. And number three video, we're going to be talking about um, the paid side of this which is very exciting and agents get some amazing results but they won't get amazing results if they don't do this bit connected to paid advertising and that has the effect if you don't do these things you're probably your paid advertisement is going to cost more money and be less effective so yeah. these are some of the major reasons in 2022 why this is important. So that's enough for me, Adam. Do you want yeah. to go through some of the other key things that they got to know about Google My Business? 
Yeah, and you know, it is a play to play to or a pay to play game um, nowadays with most social media platforms. And I do consider Google My Business a social media platform as well as like a listing and search engine um, kind of a platform and program or application as well. So kind of keep that in mind and, and we'll, we'll talk a little more about why that is. What are the basics that real estate agents, let's, let's start with the actual process of how you set up and rep and um, set it up and get Google to accept that you own that particular page. Yeah, so there's a a few steps that you're going to take. Um, The first thing is you're going to go to business.google.com or you can just Google search Google My Business and it'll pop up the link that you can click on. And so you're going to need to sign in to to create that. If you don't have a Google um, account, you're going to create one basically. And then you'll go through the different steps to take so that you can start filling in all the necessary information and get it verified and things like that. So this is something that you can do on your own. But again, there's some things uh, in the account that are pretty intentional and necessary so that you can kind of maximize your reach out there, especially on the organic side. But then once you start doing ads with Google, with your Google My Business account, these things start to make a big difference, especially with your return on investment. So keep that in mind. But yeah, you could definitely set it up yourself. We also have a plan that includes this in um, our mail right system as well that you can check out. We'll include the link in here as well. So you can look at that and find out some details. But we want to help you maximize your search engine optimization out there. So when people search for you or they search for realtors in their area or like where Jonathan lives. If I'm, you know, asking Google while I'm driving realtors near me in Reno, for instance, what's going to pop up? So we want that to be you to be popping up on that first page. So um, once you go to business.google.com, you're going to navigate through each of the tabs and there's several of them on there. Most of the tabs, when you're setting it up, there's going to be a little note that pops up that says that you're going to need to verify before you can add that option. Um, So for posts, insights, reviews, messages, and products for now, those are the things where unless you're verified, you can't really add anything to those areas. But it's good to know they're there and be familiar with those. So when you click on the home page, you're going to also notice um, on that left side, there's going to be the different tabs. And so click through each one of those, get familiar. And then once you click into the info part, that's where we're going to start to add some of the important things about you or your business, the area you live in and whatnot. So there's going to be um, business hours and things like that that we'll set up as well. With my account, I mm-hmm. have the Google Workspace, which used to be G Suite. And so that that works. You um, can utilize that, can you? So that'll work too. So it kind of has a more professional login credentials you know if you prefer so um thanks for that adam so i'm not totally correct on this if you've got what adam was trying to point out to me folks is if you've got a workspace um email um with google which is their professional level it's the level up Mm -hmm. from um they're free you have to pay for this it depends on how many inboxes if it's just one inbox, it will cost you around six dollars a month. Yeah, um, it's pretty affordable, um, and I think the plan's like two hundred bucks or close to that. So it's not something that's going to be ridiculous. But if you need multiple inboxes, it can get a bit expensive. Yeah, but if you're looking at one inbox, it's not that expensive. But you can set that up, and you can utilize it for setting up your Google Business page. Otherwise. Mm-hmm you're going to have to set up a free Gmail account and utilize that in the setting up process. The second part, which used to be a bit easier, but they've made a little bit hard. They they really want to make, you've really got to have a physical address in the area that you want to show up when people do searches. Yeah. So you, 
you can hide it too after the fact. Yes. Um, but to verify your account, um, and I actually just was reading about the virtual. There's so much virtual mm -hmm. uh, businesses now that there are some possibilities now to verify as a virtual business. So we can maybe look into that either, you know, later. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. I thought um, I thought the main thing when I was doing this really regularly, folks, was that um, it you can use your brokerage. The only problem is that they're going to have multiple agents using the the brokerage address, and that can be that reduces the effect effectiveness of you showing up, and it's a little bit confusing for Google. Mm -hmm. um so but you can still do that you can use your home i would strongly advise even though you can hide it as adam says i don't think that's a great idea myself yeah the other thing is you can't use a you can't use a post office po address google will not accept that mm -hmm. but there are alternatives i know that there's obviously you can have a a shared business address um in um, shared office space there's also virtual companies that google doesn't see as a po box but it's ver it's still a virtual office but they have various offices around and so you still get a physical address which google will recognize i will have some of these resources in the notes that support this video um but normally you've got to have you got to have some form of physical address and then they send a postcode postcard to that address which you mustn't lose you must get it <laughs> kind of and important because <laughs> you have to redo this it's there's a big delay but if you find the card you've got to find the card it will have a serial number and then when you log in it will ask you for this serial number that's correct isn't it adam yeah, it has a PIN number on there that you'll type into um, your Google My Business account once you get that in the mail. And it usually right. takes, I think, five days, they say. Right. Um, it's very nondescript. Um, mm -hmm. It's easy. If you're getting a load of junk mail, you've got to keep your eyes skinned because it's quite yeah. easy. If you just grab hold of most of the, the mail that's sent to your business address and you dump it, it's really it always ends up in the newspaper the free newspaper that's sent to you yeah so you've got to keep your eyes because you don't want to have to do this because if you do it a second time it takes a couple of weeks before the card gets to what it used to yeah they made this a little bit harder because you used in the um about 18 months to three years ago you used to be able to phone them up um and they would um, give them a phone number and they used to call you and um, the, over the phone, they would give you the number. But they had so many people trying to put false addresses mm -hmm. that now they only send the the card out. Yeah. So, what's the next thing, Adam, on this on this one hundred and one journey? Yeah. So, you know, like Jonathan said, determine you know work or home, um, and then also be careful too, because a lot of the MLS guidelines. And, and things that you have in your area and based on the state and things, you might not be able to use your home address. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Plus, you don't really want the public to know, even if it helps with searches, that that's where you live. So for safety purposes, we kind of advise against that for those reasons. So yeah, so log in, go through those. Um, check out the info tab, definitely, that's on the left-hand side. And you just kind of scroll down to that. Inside that, that's where you're going to add your address. So whether it's the brokerage or however you feel that's going to work out best for you, then you're going to go into the different service areas. And so this is really important because when people are Googling realtors in your area, for instance, um, I live in Bend, Oregon. So if someone is Googling realtors in Bend, Oregon, who's going to pop up? And that's what these service areas are for. So you want to put kind of the main cities or towns that you work in that people are going to search um, and starting with like the most important one first so mine would be bend because it's the biggest city in central oregon and still not even that big and so um, like jonathan would put reno 
um, Carson City, Tahoe, Sparks, like those would be service areas for his area. After that, um, you will go into the hours of operation. And so based on the day and the time, when are you going to open? You know, not everybody wants to be accessible 24 hours a day. So that's kind of up to you on what you want to put. So you know, I, if it's nine to five or eight to five. I would actually, I differ a little bit. It, it, it does depend, but I think if you're really looking to build your business up, mm -hmm. especially if you're linking this to the paid side, which you're going to be discussing in one of the other videos, you, re, I would advise you to put 24 hours on it. Um, I would too. Yeah. Really like, Same um, with Facebook and stuff too. Yeah. We got yeah. to, we got to be realistic here. This is you're in you're in real estate, and real estate is a twenty four hour, seven day a week industry <laughs> until you get established and you have people working for you. Yeah. Um, and it isn't a seven day, twenty four hour um, profession, basically. Um, yeah. So um, I think the other thing is there's a couple other really key areas. You've got to fill this in as much as possible. If the more information you can put in, the more Google likes it. Yeah. If, you've got to have, if you've got some nice photos, you've got to have some nice photos of yourself. And those photos, and they're not being disparaging here, they can't be 10 years ago. They've got to be pretty recent. They're yeah. going to be professional, but not too artificial looking. Um, and the more photos, especially if you've got photos with people that you've sold some houses with yeah. and some Happy photos clients. of you about doing your business, um, yeah. the more photos and you, and you need to give them titles and tag them because uh, um, that's important as well. Yeah. Um, what do, you think, you what do you think of that, Adam? Yeah, definitely. You know, and that's one of the tabs that's just a little bit lower that you'll go into. Um, just make sure you fill out all the info on that info tab. You know, there's a phone number. If you have a website, um, add you, the URL for your website. So your website address there. If you don't have one, you can actually click and have um, a website, like just a super basic one to um, the Google My Business, or you can have yeah. one you of our can plans, right? buy. You can pay for a website through them. Obviously, yeah. Mel, as part of our package, we offer um, a basic personalized and um, and then IDX, and then yeah. we offer custom and full. I do, I, I'm going to say this. I said the first bit to this to make it clear that we might be a little bit biased. <laughs> but I'm I'm saying this in all honesty. You do not want to buy your website through Google. It's extremely very basic. It's yeah. a very basic editor, and you definitely don't want to buy your domain through Google because it's a it's a nightmare to regain control yeah. of that domain. It's all robotized. If you have a problem. It's a nightmare. There's nobody to talk to. There's nobody to ring up and ask if this. And I've had to spend a few hours, many hours of my life trying to get hold of somebody in Google, which is practically even more difficult than Facebook, to try and get a domain released from Google when somebody's purchased a, a website. And it seems attractive, but the problem is people, they purchase the domain through that service, and that is the problem. Yeah. And I guess, you know, kind of to summarize what Jonathan's saying is it's not worth the return on investment. You're not going to get what you need out of that basic website. And then he said a basic plan for what we have with MailRite. That does not mean a basic website, though. We have a – it's a really um, – well put together search engine ranked type of a wordpress website that we create in our plans and so that basic plan just doesn't have the idx feed but those are other options that you can yeah. get that we develop for you i think just to finish off now if you agree adam 
I think the uh, the next biggest thing, and it's really important, and it causes also a lot of confusion, is you filled everything up, you got the postcode, you put the serial number in, you've filled in all the bio, you've uploaded some nice photos of yourself, you've uploaded some photos of people, houses that you've represented, had successful sales. You've also maybe uploaded some video yeah, as well. All that's good. Yeah. It's all good. They do they do like to see, you know, you'll get there, but they do like to see about a hundred photos and videos on there to kind of look established as a business too. Mm. So that does help. The more you can upload, the happier. But the next important thing, and I can't emphasize how important this is, and it's an area where a lot of agents really fall on their face is you need a fair few reviews. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and this really count. Google really, really focuses on the reviews. Yeah. And they, the more reviews you have, when you go come, when you're ready to pay for the paid element, which we're going to discuss in a later video, the cheaper it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And, also, when it comes to the organic side, folks, your your Google My Business page will show up more organically the more reviews you've got. It's one of the main parameters. It's location, how much you filled in your Google My Business page, but the Third, and I would say the biggest, is how many reviews you've got. Yeah. yeah. But you get people that cheat. And what they do is they set up a load of Yahoo or Gmail accounts. And then they, in front of their computer, they knock up 12, 15 artificial reviews. Please don't do that because Google will ban you and you're going to get in a lot of trouble because if you're doing it at the same computer, mm -hmm. they know your IP address. Yeah. Our IP address, every computer has a unique numbered address and your internet provider, also organizations like Google, Facebook and other online advertisement platforms they will know your IP address. And um, this applies to Yelp. This applies to Zillow. Um, all these major platforms, they have the technology to identify your IP address. Can outsmart them. Well, it, if you get flagged and then actual human looks at it <laughs> you're in trouble with them that's for sure. this is not something you want to go and it doesn't normally no. um it's not a human does it but it's done by technology and that not, technology works pretty well so um you so have you got any insights about how people do get reviews and yeah. testimonials in a yeah. legit you way know, yeah, know. and I think just with our clients and, and some of my personal clients is um, there's a, a link on the home page. And if you scroll down, it'll um, you can share your profile so you can use that link. So, you know, people put those in emails, follow up emails after closings with happy clients and just ask them if they can take a couple seconds, couple minutes just to give you a good review, add some details on why it was such an exceptional five star um, experience for them. You can also send them via text as well. So always ask for five stars too. Don't just say, can you give me a review? Say, can you give me a five star review? And um, you're going to know if your clients were happy and they're going to do that. If they're not, just don't ask them for that review. Um, remember to, um, I don't know about you, Jonathan, but you know, most of the items I buy now it's based on review and I'll actually pay even more money for something if it has better reviews than something that has, you know, less than stellar reviews. So um, I think the statistic is that over 80% of people trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation now. So that tells you how important these are to have um, these online testimonials and recommendations 
on Google My Business for you. So keep that in mind um, as you kind of get all these reviews and ask past clients and friends that have worked with you to add their five-star reviews with some details for you. Yeah, so there's two things. I totally agree with what Adam's just said, but there's two things I want to point out. Number one, you're a new agent, and you're mm-hmm. thinking, I haven't, because the best time to do this, to approach, to get really great reviews, is when somebody's IV, somebody has sold their home or they've purchased their home through you. And the quicker you do it after the successful purchase or sale of a house, the more they will probably do what you ask them to do and they'll be motivated to do it. But for the new agent, you're probably thinking, well, I haven't got any clients. Well, Mm -hmm. the great thing is it doesn't have to be around the sale. If you there's anybody, any person you've done business before, um, you can send them at that link and you can ask them for a review, a review about the, what type of person you are. Yeah, ha, working ha, with you. What's it been like what's working it like? with you? And Maybe you, it was a different company even, and that's okay. They don't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Google doesn't care. Yeah. What they care is it's an honest review about you from somebody else, and it's from... Uh, another ip address and yeah. don't ask a friend to do what i've just outlined what you shouldn't you've got a friend that's doing five different reviews under five different it's the same thing applies that yeah. it will be a, a same ip address they know then that it's not mccoy it's something dicey it will get you into trouble the other thing I want to point out, and it's a plug for Mel, right, is that we have an inbuilt review system yeah, that encourages it. And it's, in, it's, an online, it's based on an online survey. You, it sends an email to a, a client asking them to, get, to fill in a quick survey about the service that they've received from you. They ask you, you know, from zero to 10 how they would rate your service and and if you, you and leave a comment they click a button and then it sends them to google um and ask them can you put the same review on google it's a really it it's more professional rather than what i've seen a few agents do which is rather send a kind of quasar begging email to people <laughs> you know You've I've sold your house. Please, please give me a five star review. I think it's a little bit beggy. Um, yeah. Our system come, just comes across as we're interested in your feedback, and it comes across professional, very professional. Yeah, and that matters. But reviews, viewers are really really important and it's something that so many agents don't capitalize on and don't there's a few aid what you see very regularly and the thing applies to zillow and yelp as well is you see a few agents that really get it Mm -hmm. and you see 80 percent of other agents don't bother yeah you want to be one of those 20 20, in that twenty percent that understand that this is really important and it will yeah. make a big difference to your business. Would you agree with that, Adam? Yeah, I mean, if eighty percent of people look at them as personal recommendations, it's extremely important now. And and remember too, like just because these are online reviews, there's nothing that doesn't say you can't copy these and put them in. A listing presentation so you can bring these 20 reviews of what your past clients or current clients have said about you so you you can use these beyond google and online and on websites and stuff too so just keep that in mind that that there's a lot of um, opportunity by having solid five-star reviews another factor um, i know it's a bit long this video and i'm going to wrap it we're going to wrap it up after this point don't get fixated about that one bad review. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've spoken to so many agents that are still ranting every time they go to, and it actually stops them from getting other reviews. 
Yeah. <laughs> because they and they won't log in to their Google business page or want because they see that bad review and they start ranting, right? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't it's... matter. But what does matter is that you answer that bad review, but you answer it in a very courteous, logical, outlying your side of what happened. Yep. But do it in a professional way. Don't answer it in anger. And secondly, if 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 you go to agents review page on Google My Business and all you see is five stars, you see like two hundred reviews and every one Sounds of them fishy. is it doesn't gel. It does. I don't yeah. care if you're Jesus Christ of a real estate <laughs> agent. You're not going to be pleased. Let's face it. They crucified him, and he was yeah. he was uh, um, he was a saint. So, yeah. no matter how great a real estate agent you are, you're going to upset some people, and they're going to leave you a crappy review. It'll happen. Don't fixate about it because I see too many agents fixate about that. Would you agree with that, Adam? Yeah, you know, Google likes on bad reviews for you to be direct with that person in your reply. So, you know, always say, hey, thank you for your feedback or something similar. And I would love to find out more information about, you know, this experience you had so we can further improve our services, something like that. Um, I even sometimes will just give people an email if they can email our marketing department so we can take a closer look at this and follow up. I rarely have anybody ever follow up for clients, um, bad reviews like that. Like usually those people post it, they're trolls and they're done with it. But you might have some legitimate reasons why that um, experience wasn't great. Like maybe you weren't willing to put an unrealistic price on that house. And so those are things you got to consider in the reply that, you know, again, be courteous with it, be friendly, be kind, but also like there's some details in facts of why maybe that didn't work out. And so that is a place to put those not spitefully, just in an educated way so that people know when they're looking through the reviews, oh, that's why you got a one star. It's because you weren't willing to you know overprice their home or you weren't willing to do certain things that that were uncomfortable or whatever the situation is so just keep those in mind when you're replying back like that directly that's great i think i'm going to wrap it up keep in mind next week we're going to be showing one of our agents websites hopefully that we've set up their google local business page so we'll just go through how we've set it up and go and reinforce the fundamentals. And the video after that, we're, we're going to be talking about the paid side of all this mm -hmm. and what Google offers, which is also really exciting. And we'll be going through some of the key things that you've got to understand about that. Hopefully yeah. you found this video really helpful. Please leave some comments, give us some feedback, good or bad. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're, in the next few weeks, we'll be going through loads of stuff that hopefully you as a real estate agent uh, are going to find useful. Also subscribe to the Mel Wright podcast. We do a weekly podcast. We've been doing that for the past three to four years. We've interviewed the best people in the real estate industry, trainers, coaches, technology. We've interviewed them all. And you find that all on this channel as well. And it's free. It's all free. So what more can you ask for, folks? We'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks.